We see a lot of people for genetic counseling, but there are really probably six questions that a person could ask themselves to figure out if they would be a candidate for genetic counseling. The first question, do you have a personal or family history of cancer, all of the same types of cancers on the same side of the family? That's question number one. So the next question would be, has anyone in the family had cancer at an atypically young age? For breast cancer, this would be age 45 or younger. For colon cancer, it would be age 50 or younger. So if anyone in the family has had an early onset cancer, they are automatically a good candidate for genetic counseling and potentially testing. The third question, are there related cancers in the family? And by that we mean cancers that are known to be caused by the same genetic mutation. So for example, the same mutation that can cause breast cancer in some families can also cause ovarian and pancreatic cancer. So when asking about a history, it's really important to think of those as a cluster. Another cluster is colon, uterine, and ovarian cancer, as well as sebaceous adenomas and carcinomas. The next question would be, is this family of Jewish ancestry? If they are of Jewish ancestry, they're at increased risk for hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. The fifth question, is there any male breast cancer in this family? If there is, then automatically that family would be a good candidate for genetic counseling and testing. And then the last question, has any one person in this family had more than one primary cancer? So we don't mean someone who's had, for example, colon cancer that has metastasized to another site. We mean someone who's had more than one primary or new colon cancer, or a colon and a uterine cancer, or for example, a breast and an ovarian cancer. When we see people who develop several different types of cancers, it increases the odds that there's an underlying genetic susceptibility that put that person at increased risk to develop cancer. So this is a common question a lot of people ask, why would I want to know? And we even have people compa compare this to Pandora's box that, gosh, you'd never want to know. There are actually some very good reasons to know. If someone knows that they carry a mutation, it can really completely tailor their medical management. So if we know that someone who's a breast cancer survivor may be at increased risk for ovarian cancer someday, our goal is to reduce the risk that they'll ever develop that cancer. So if the person is over the age of 40 or done with childbearing, we may even recommend prophylactically or preventatively removing their ovaries and fallopian tubes before they can ever develop cancer. And while no one wants to have a preventative surgery, that surgery can often be done laparoscopically with several small incisions. And believe it or not, it's often done as an outpatient procedure. And so that's one reason a person might want to know. Another reason a person might want to know is it can really shape their surveillance. So instead of beginning colonoscopies at age 50, as we would in the general population, in some families we begin colonoscopies at age 25. In families with childhood onset colon cancer, believe it or not, we begin colonoscopies at age 10 or 15. And so it can really help shape the management. For some types of cancer, there are also medications that people can take to reduce their risk of ever getting cancer. So if we know someone carries a mutation, they can take a medication like that and reduce their chance of ever getting the cancer. Another very important reason that someone might want to have genetic testing is that it can help their whole family. So it can help their children, their siblings, sometimes their parents, aunts and uncles, cousins, even grandchildren. It can help us manage the entire family and reduce their risks of getting cancer. Most insurance companies do pay for genetic counseling and for genetic testing for families who really need the service. Not everyone can come in and get it. You really do need to have certain risk factors in the family. But if those risk factors are present, most insurance companies will pay for testing.